Hello and welcome back to the River Poker Masterclass, where we are continuing on this week's episode of Basic Bluffing Player Tells. In a few minutes, our poker expert Simon will answer some of your questions and thoughts that you've been sending in throughout the show. If you send in your questions now, they won't be answered during this week's show. However, they may be answered on our website or Twitter. So please send your questions in to www.channel4.com forward slash The River Show or by tweeting us at The River Show. Now, before we finish this week's episode, we've lined up some top tips for you on player tells. So tell me, Simon, what are the player tells? Well, Kira, a player tell is a piece of information that players give off about themselves whenever they're playing a hand. This could be a very small thing like a natural reaction, habits, behavior. All these can give you clues as to whether they're holding a strong hand or a weak hand. Mm. Let's take a few examples for you. Remembering your cards can prove to be tricky if you aim to remember the suit as well. It's natural for you to constantly check your cards over and over despite you probably knowing what you have. Constantly checking your cards could indicate to other players you're looking to see if you have a straight or a flush. When you're dealt your cards, remember them exactly as it will make reading your hand a lot harder for opponents. This will take some time to practice and get used to but will pay off in the long term. On the flop, don't watch the cards being laid on the table. Instead, observe your opponents and their reactions. Those cards are not going anywhere. You can look at them later. Watching an opponent's body language can indicate to you whether they are at peace with their card on the flop or disappointed. If a player talks a lot, it can indicate they have a strong hand. Listen to the tone of their voice though. If it changes pitch, it can reveal that they are worried and not confident in their hand. If not, it can mean the opposite. If you suspect a player may be bluffing, ask them questions such as, where did you get your watch? And listen carefully to the response. If they're fumbling for words while responding, it means they're bluffing due to nerves. If it's a confident response, it can mean they have a strong hand. If an opponent is being aggressive and throwing their chips into the pot when betting or raising, it generally means they are bluffing as if they are basically saying, get out the hand as they don't want you to call. If an opponent neatly places the chips in the pot, they are saying they want you to call. If you know you have a bad hand, don't call. Right, I think I understand them better now, actually. Yeah, they're really quite simple and they can be very useful in the situation. Let's take a look at this example. I have pocket kings, you have pocket jacks. Now I've flopped three of a kind, which is a very strong hand. If I make a very large bet, from my natural reactions, you can tell that I've got a very strong hand and make the correct decision to fold, which can save you a lot of chips in the long run. Now, be careful when using tells like this against more experienced players, because they're much harder to read. But against the newer players, this should be very handy. Well, thank you for the help and tips, Simon. I'll make sure I remember them when in the game. Right, we are nearly at the end of the show now. However, we have a few questions we'd like to answer sent in to us by our viewers. Firstly, from our website, Dan from Hertfordshire asks, what do you recommend I do if on the flop a player I think is bluffing bets, so I raise them, but they re-raise me? Well, in this situation, I think you have only one of two options. You can obviously fold if you think a hand is as bad as theirs is, or you should raise them again. You shouldn't call because it's almost saying, I don't have a good hand, I just want to see if yours is worse. There are also another, a number of other things you should be looking out for, like how the hand played out, how, you know, how well you know that player, how many chips are in the pot. Make sure you think about all these before you make a decision. Okay, thank you, Simon. Now, also on Twitter, KJ Augie asks, if I'm playing online poker, how do I go about bluffing? Bluffing in online poker can be difficult for a number of reasons. You may never really get to learn your opponent as they are often changing, and also there are no visual tells. What I find, though, is if you aim to bluff online, make it a real-sized bet. Never min-raise. Remember, you want all your opponents to fold, so try not to bluff when there's a lot of players in the hand. Also, in very slow-stakes games, there's not very much to lose, so players will tend to call no matter, what, no matter what they have. Okay, thank you again. Now, our Glover asks, why is bluffing so important to poker? Bluffing is vital because you're more likely to get people to call you later on when you have stronger hands, resulting in you getting more chips. Remember, in poker, you play your opponents, not the cards. Okay, Simon. Thanks very much for your insights there. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today, but remember you can still ask questions at any time via our website www.channel4.com forward slash The River Show or by tweeting us at The River Show. So I'd like to thank Simon for his poker expertise as well as those of you watching at home for getting involved. I'm Kira Walsh and I hope you join us at the same time next week on The River Poker Masterclass. Goodbye. <laughs>